Hello, Hope students. Um, I, I hope you're all doing well and that you're staying safe. And this week we're continuing our, in our series on James 1, and we're going to be in verses 19 and 27. And please bear with me, it's a long passage. <laughs> um, so James so far has talked about trials and temptations, and now he's talking about not just hearing the word, but doing the word and being active in our faith. And that reminds me of a time in freshman year for me um, in college where I had a roommate and we just, we butted heads all the time. And it was on issues of like how to clean, how to vacuum, and how to, how to just live together. It was a tough situation where a guy eventually, it went on for so long where a guy had to say, hey, the reason you guys are fighting is because you're not listening to each other. You're not listening to one another's needs. You're not communicating. You're not doing anything to keep a resolution in place. And after me and my roommate, we talked about it and we're like, we're going to listen to each other. We're going to care for each other. And we're going to try and work together to find a resolution. And the ironic thing is that when we did that, right after we established a resolution and our, resolution and our relationship got better, he moved out. Because <laughs> he was only in college for like two months. So that was the ironic part of it. And I think with communication, it's hard. And today in James, we're, we're going to see that when we, when we read the Bible, we're not just to hear what's in here, but we are to do what's in the Word. We are to take action in our faith. I'm going to read uh, the entire, uh, all, all the verses together, and then I'm going to chunk them up for you guys. Starting off in verse 19, it says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers, only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away, and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. And in verse 26, 27, it says that if anyone thinks that he is religious, and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart. This person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their afflictions and to keep oneself unstained from the world. So in verses 19 to 21, he's talking. He's saying, hey, slow down. Don't be angry when you talk. When you listen, listen with an open mind and don't rush to judgment. Don't rush to anger because anger is... Anger is not drawing us to God, it's drawing us away from God. It says to be quick to hear. Because oftentimes when we when we don't hear things, we're just gonna react, we're gonna be angry, we're gonna talk about stuff. And he's like, no, stop it. <laughs> you guys are Christians. You guys need to hear the word and hear each other. And he says to put away all filthiness, everything basically that is not who God wants you to be, put that away. And he says, receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save us. The word meekness is drawing to Matthew 5, where James is saying, because of this word is given to us, and, it, and, is hum and is God has humbly given this word to us, we are to humbly receive it. And we are not to just read it and know the passages, but we are to take it into our lives and live it out. <laughs> and then he says in verse 22, to 25, and he's not contradicting himself. He's like, hey, you guys know to listen, to, to slow down, to be patient, but within listening, you have to be doers of the word. Because we can listen to this all we want to, listen to the word being spoken on sermons, on messages, on small groups, but if we don't do anything and implement this in our lives, he's going to say later on that there's basically no point. And he gives a metaphor to a man who looks in a mirror and then when he walks away, he forgets what he's and he forgets what he looks like. He's basically saying, "What's the point? <laughs> what was the point of the man looking at the mirror if he's going to forget what he looks like?" In the same way, he says the same can be applied that when we read this word and when we hear it being spoken and we listen to it, if we don't do anything with it, then what's the point? <laughs> what's the point of doing that? And he says that we are to look in the word because the word is perfect, the word is good, and it is something that perseveres, it gives us hope, and it gives us strength to continue in our faith and grow in the knowledge of our God. And he says that 
and the, at the end of verse 25, that being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. So when we hear the word of God, we are to do something with that. And when we do something, we are being blessed because we are taking action in our faith. We are leading our brothers and sisters Christ, our brothers and sisters in Christ further into a relationship with the Lord. And we are advancing the kingdom of God. And in verses 26 to 27, he talks about this religion that, again, he's talking to Christians that are dispersed all over, all over the, um, all over the place that they were at at the time. It's Christians that are dispersed, and he says, "Hey, you can a religious man can know all of this. They can quote chapter and verse and know the ideas in it. But if you're not implementing it in your life and you're not living it out, then he says your religion is worthless." He talks about, and he says that that religion is not what religion is, but a true religion. Excuse me. In verse 27, he said, he says that religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their afflictions and to keep oneself unstained from the world. And when he talks about these orphans and widows, he's again referring back to Matthew 5, where Jesus is on the Sermon on the Mount. And in verses 1 to 12, he's basically saying, care for one another, care for the people that are not cared for. And that the world's gonna when 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 he says unsustained from being be, to be unsustained from the world he doesn't say like go remove to a re remote island or always take care of orphans never take care of yourself or your family no he's saying don't isolate yourself and don't keep this word for yourself because we're gonna give it to people that are broken and that are needy and we're all broken in our sin but also there are people that need more than that need more than this word and that there are physical vital needs that people need, that we can give. When I was a freshman and my roommate left, the next roommate I had, I realized to listen because I didn't want to go through the cycle again of not listening and having a bad relationship. Just like with you guys in school, if you guys don't listen to your school lectures and the lectures given to you by your family, uh, your friends, and even just your conversations. If you don't listen actively and if you don't invest, then you're not going to grow. You're not going to learn anything. Because the point, the point of school for everyone is to teach us how to learn. And the point of the Bible is to teach us how to learn and grow in our faith. And, and, if, we're just, and if we're just listening to it on a Sunday night or in small groups, and if we're not putting this in our lives into practice, then what's the point of doing it? <laughs> it's like when it, it takes time because there's, there's a tension that exists between listening to the word and putting it into practice and doing it. There's a tension that exists because we're sinful, but by God's grace, he sent his son that we, he sent, sent his son, sent the spirit, and sent the word that we, that we get to know about him and that we get to communicate the world that he loves us and we are to be doers of the word and not hearers so some application points for you guys is to listen to do to care and then to repeat to listen to your friends and family and the ones that are lost and listen to their needs and help communicate that you care about them and listen to the word, listen to the spirit that guides us in our reading and in our devotion. And that we are to listen and we are to do, we are to actively pursue our faith in, a, in advancing the kingdom, advancing the fact that we are Christians and continuing on in our faith. Because again, if we, if we just listen to this and if we just know everything in here, if we don't do anything in our faith, then everything is just going to stay up here. And the words are not meant to stay in our heads. It's meant to stay, go from our heads to our hearts and then to the people all across the world. So listen, do, and care. Those are things that coincide. That, that the caring comes from listening, comes from doing, taking action. Because when you listen to someone, showing that you care, and when you do something to help the relationship, it shows that you care, and then that leads to them showing you care. And that's a great opportunity for us to share the gospel because we listen to the fact that we're sinful. Then we take action in deciding who Christ is, and then we say, we're going to care because we've been cared for, because we've been given the chance of eternal life. 
and the chance for a second the chance for eternal life and the chance to live like Christ on this earth. And then we are to repeat because it's a continual cycle of listening and doing properly. That's something where I've done it perfectly. Pastor Greg, Pastor Mickey, no one's done perfectly. Christ being the exception, but it's something where you look at um, you look at Paul before he was a Christian, when he, when he was killing Christians, you look at David, you look at so many people in this book that have messed up but are moving from a point of listening to the gospel and listening to this word to taking action. So remember as you go on throughout your week that if we're not taking action, if we're just listening to what this has and we're not putting it into practice in our lives, then what's the point? And another thing, too, is that when we, when we kind of invest in just listening, we're giving into the lie of the enemy, and we're giving into our sinful desire that we don't want to continue. We don't want to do the hard thing, because the hard thing in our faith is to continue on and is to help people wrestle with their faith and wrestle with their convictions and their sin. And though we don't wrestle directly, we, we wrestle and we pray with them and pray with the Holy Spirit. And prayer is something that, in, in regards to care, when James talks about orphans, and widows, something where we don't have to, with your position that you're in, you guys, even my position I'm in, I can't always take care of them, but something we can do is pray for them. Pray that they, that they have a connection, that they have a relationship, and that hopefully they can hear the gospel. So in whatever ways you can in the next coming weeks, remember to slow down, to listen, to not be angry, because anger draws us away from God. To take action in your faith, listening to the truths in this word and the truths from your brothers and sisters in Christ, but taking action in living out a life of a true disciple of Christ. And then caring about what you do, caring about your sin nature, that you want to get better, caring about your brothers and sisters in Christ and the lost, that they don't have a relationship, caring about what's in this book and living it out, and then repeating that process. Again, it's continual, it's hard, and it's something that we should not look at it as a burden. We should look at it we should look at it as a complete joy. The fact that we're given a second chance, that we're given eternal life. That's something that we should never, never get tired of speaking of. And the thing that I always draw, and I've heard these verses so many times, the thing I always draw, and I'm going to leave you with this, don't become complacent in your faith. Don't stay in one spot, because hearing and doing should come together. They should come together in the fact that we're listening to the Spirit, and we're doing the work that Christ has prepared for us. I hope you guys have a good week and that you stay safe.